This is where they're gonna be. Oh, I see a little tail. Where'd he go? Oh, I got him. Check that out. What are you? That's a tiny snake. Anything else? He was tiny. Right, I don't think there's anything. I'm gonna leave it there. What are you? I think that's a red-bellied snake. Check him out, he's so tiny. Wow, he's different looking. He's got an orange belly. That's a fat one. My goodness, we've been catching some tiny snakes lately. Now this is actually the first one that I've ever seen. He's got a little orange patch by his head. And as you can see, that's where they get that name red-bellied snake. He's got a bright red belly and he's got a copper stripe going all the way down his back. Now this is a non-venomous snake and they'd mostly be eating insects, little worms, and it's a fat snake, a really heavy bodied snake, and they can't climb at all. 100% a ground dwelling snake. In fact, most of the time, during this time of year, they'd be underground. The reason he'd be under that piece of tin is because the piece of tin gets pretty hot, so he'd be sitting on top of the grass, underneath the piece of tin, heating up. Now we had heard that there were a couple of snakes found under this exact piece of tin, and uh, I figured that we could actually find maybe a coral snake or a scarlet snake because of these pine woods, built kind of like a water snake. Look at how fat he is. Now I'd have to guess that this is a female. The females do get a bump bigger than the males. I'm pretty sure that this is the smallest snake we've ever filmed. Smaller than the ringnecks, the pine wood snake. It's like a quarter the size of them. Super tiny little snake and really hard to get close-ups of. That's going to be one of the only good ways that y'all be able to see it. But one thing's for sure, he feels like rubber. If you feel him, he's like a little rubbery, squishy snake. He's not like all those other little snakes that we catch. And it's definitely a species of ground-dwelling snake, meaning he wouldn't climb for anything and they would only live on the ground. Now one thing that I find interesting is that these little variations of snakes, they don't have names, meaning like this variation with the stripe on his back, they don't consider it any different than the ones up north, like the northern red bellies. So what I would call this snake, like if I could give this snake its own name, I would call it a dusky ground snake. Which I, you know, I kind of like naming snakes because, you know, you could always come up with better names for these species of snakes. So what do you guys think about that name? A dusky ground snake. Maybe we could actually get them to be named that. That'd be pretty cool. Now if you can imagine, anything that finds this snake is going to eat this snake. Other larger snakes, any bird, even a little bird will come up and swoop this guy and eat him. And even arm, things like armadillos. Armadillos will like dig up and if they're eating worms all day and they see a little snake like this, they're gonna eat this snake. Virtually anything can eat this snake and the only times you're really gonna find them is if they're under something or even digging them up. That's a reason why stuff like armadillos and raccoons or anything that would be kind of rooting around digging would find and eat this snake. And this is a full grown snake. This isn't a baby snake. This is a full grown red bellied snake. It's crazy really. And just, you know, you got to imagine, they've really got to hide well to not run into any kind of predators. And they've got predators underground too, like coral snakes and milk snakes, that'll even follow them into their tunnels and eat them. So they've got a pretty rough life when it comes to predators. One thing interesting about all these little tiny animals is how they get water. See, to this guy, a drop of dew or even a drop of rainwater in the mornings and evenings is like you drinking a whole bottle of water. So they get their water basically from dew and rain, which is really interesting. They don't need to be by a large body of water like a pond. They can be upland where there's virtually no water, but in the mornings they will come out and drink dew. Like one little drop of dew can be great for this guy's whole day. One drop of dew, it's amazing. Now if you ever find a snake this small, you automatically know that it's gonna be non-venomous because even newborn cotton mouths and copperheads are not this small. I mean, this is a tiny snake, and this is full grown for a red-bellied snake. Now, one thing I want to talk about is called a regional variant. See, this red-bellied snake will look very different than a lot of the ones that I'll see in books, because the ones in books are mostly northern red-bellied snakes, ones that have lived up north. And you're going to have variants depending on where animals live. So down here in the south, it's got that red band across the top, and it's got a more yellowish-orange color, and that's called a regional variant, where they vary you know, it's still a red-bellied snake, but they kind of vary in color and different patterns depending on where they live, which is pretty cool. Look at that little dude. Tiny, tiny head. It's going to be hard to show you guys on camera. Going to have to kind of rely on close-ups. This is where he's the most comfortable with me holding him, just kind of holding him up like this. Look at that little snake. Tiny little thing. Smaller than ringneck snakes and smaller than that pinewood snake we found a little while ago. 
That's pretty cool. I've never found a red-bellied snake before. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. And I will see you guys next time. All right, watch this. Fun fact, I've never found anything good under a tire, ever. Well, that's a tire. It's a tire, mate. If you ever see somebody find something under a tire, I almost guarantee you they put it there. I've never found anything good under a tire, ever.